let's do this. So I'm going on this today. This is what I wrote. It's not much there, but I just did a quick thing because I want to go from, from, from memory pretty much. But that's what we're looking at. We're looking at warnings. What? The, toward the middle one. Oh, toward the middle? Yeah, in case you do a short. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right, toward the middle. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, because I can't see it. Okay. So, um... Well, we're looking at warnings that are in the Bible and, and, and fearfulness because Dylan has been sharing me recently. He's been attending certain Bible studies and people tend to put this thought of, you know, what about the warnings? Because when, when Dylan tries to put the message of grace out there, people want to come back with warnings and to try and put some fear mm -hmm. in you. What, what, what was the one, the, the one you recently shared with me was where he says that, well, God holds you more accountable now that you're a child and now that you're his, his kids. A parent holds their kids more accountable than the neighbor's kids or something. Like, how did they say it? No, they said that um, um, after we get saved, uh, we're, uh, God is harder on us because he, we're held more accountable because we know better. We know yeah, better. because we know better. We know better. Mm -hmm. if, if we know better and we keep sinning, then God's going to really deal with us, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not well, see, like we don't know any better. I believe that it's, it's more a sense of, uh, it's not so much accountability as maturity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't mm -hmm. think it's so much, uh, you know, that he holds you more accountable. Mm -hmm. I think there's a level of growth that we as Christians, yeah. you know, I, I think that because there's like a child when the father beats them and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and punishes them and, and, and it can be pretty scary. And the mm -hmm. kids even think, oh, you're a mean dad, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't understand. It's a lack mm -hmm. of understanding. He's trying, if it's a good father, he's trying to help the kid. He's trying mm -hmm. to make sure that they don't do this again. You know, you almost ran out in that street just now. Mm -hmm. Okay, wet your little bottom, okay, and now mm -hmm. you think, you're, oh, you're a mean daddy. He just saved you. He's trying to save your life. Right, right. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So little kids, they don't understand. So there's a limited understanding. But as you go and mature, you look back and you say, boy, thank you, Dad. You probably yeah. saved my life yeah. in the future. Yeah. Do, spent giving me a whooping for that, almost running out in the street. You know? See, so as you grow and mature, you look back. It's more of a level of understanding and mm -hmm. maturity of understanding God is not you know, somebody to, to be feared. He's somebody to be loved. He's somebody to be appreciated and understand that discipline is good for me. I respect it. I appreciate it. I, 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 I want it. Yeah. I, I need it. Learn from yeah, it. Yeah. And, and so it's a different level. It's just, it's not, oh no, yeah, he holds you more accountable. You better get busy because, you know, and then they throw the warnings out there like that one verse of, there's a verse that talks about scourging. You know, that's, that can be scary. And that's in the New Testament, but it's, it talks about scourging. But you know what? That's a quote from an. Uh, let's look at that real quick. Let's go look at scourge. I want you to look go to Hebrews twelve six. This is one of the words that people use to put fear in you. Mm -hmm. Remember, we saw last week that the, the Bible says in Romans chapter eight that He has not given us a spirit again to fear. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But how does it say it? Uh, it says but, by a spirit of adoption. Where we, why, why we cry, Abba, Father. But a spirit oh. of adoption where we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. Right. right. Okay, so there's a little right. level of understanding there. He's not right. a judge. He's Daddy. He's, he's not a judge. He's Abba. He's mm -hmm. Daddy. We cry out, Abba, not oh, judge. Right. We cry out, Abba, Daddy. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. It's from seeing him as a judge and ready to pounce on you, ready to, you know, give you a really good number two. The Bible says that all scripture is God-breathed. Okay, and it's good for rebuking and correction. And you do see rebuking in the Bible. You see, you see Paul rebuking the Galatians, calling them foolish Galatians, right? Mm -hmm. he, he does that to the Corinthians, too. He did that to the Corinthians, telling them, you, you babes in Christ, you're carnal, carnal Christians, Christians. Mm -hmm. you're babes in Christ, I can't even give you any milk. There is rebuke, but look what he, they're doing. He's dealing with, in, in Corinthians, he's dealing with certain sects of people that are saying, oh, I follow Paul, I follow Paulus. You know, yeah, it's right. like different weird stuff going on. You right. got to look at the context and see what oh, yeah. is he dealing with, right? They're causing divisions. They're dividing over stuff. And that's where he's dealing with, that's where he's rebuking them. And in Galatians, he's rebuking them because they're going back under law. They're, 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 they're toying with the law again. He's causing you foolish Galatians. How, do you used to understand this whole gospel message so clear. What are you doing? You know, who has bewitched you? Who's, yeah. telling, who's pulling you back in, away from the, how did you get the Holy Spirit? Did you earn him? Did you work for him? No, you got him when you heard the message. Well, why are you now trying to be made perfect in the flesh? Okay, that's mm -hmm. not how you got him. You didn't get him through works of the flesh, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. You put your faith in Christ and he gave you his Holy Spirit because of your faith. 
The Bible says if you stop working for this and just believe he justifies you in godly, he takes your faith and gives you righteousness. It's, it's a faith factor, right? Right, right, right. See? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, okay, so let's look at it. This is one of the ones, huh? Discouraging. Yeah, let's look at this. Let's look at the scourging. Because this Hebrews is the, what? Uh, Hebrews uh, 12. 12, 6. 12, 6. Okay. Go ahead. I'll get there. Five okay. Good, uh, yeah, let's start at five. And okay. have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons? My son, do not despise the Lord's chastening of the, right. uh, the, the chastening of the Lord, which is just correction. Right. right. You go look at yeah. all other translations, and they put correction there. Who mm -hmm. corrects you? Okay. That's a beautiful thing, right? I was a drug dealer, a drug addict, going in and out of prison, and God used. Jail to correct me, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's called Department of Corrections. Yes, the, the prison, yes. the jails, the prisons. If you go to prison, it's called Department of the Corrections. You have this this thing on the, 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 the their hats, the police, and their, their little badges. They say Department of Corrections. They're that they yeah. correct you. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing, and God used that to correct me. The Bible talks about that in Romans chapter twelve, it, it, uh, chapter thirteen, Romans thirteen. It says to respect those in authority. He says they they don't wear the they don't bear the sword for nothing. Yeah. yeah. If you want to stay, want to stay free from punishment, well then, do what they say. You know. Right. But but uh, you know if you want to break the rules, hey, th there's something to fear mm -hmm. there. Right. 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 Because that is the tool. He says that, that that's that, that's that one of the tools that Lord, Lord Lord uses to correct us. But it's to help us. It's you know I look back on that. And I, that if, if there is a scourging of the Lord, I would have to say that was my scourging, mm -hmm. going to jail. You know. Scary mm -hmm. place to be. Mm -hmm. Eventually going to Lancy Street, the attack therapy. Yes. That, that was my that was my scourging, but I yeah. needed it. Right. Okay. So if there is a scourging, and I question if there even is a scourging because of um, the way people use that term. Yeah. You know, to scare you. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, because Jesus was scourged. His scourging was being tied to a pole and his back ripped wide open. Yeah. And he went through that so that we don't. Right, right, right. He yeah. suffered that extre extreme pain of a, being whipped and beaten and nailed to a cross so that we don't have to be deal with that punishment mm -hmm. from God. So he was scourged well, so we won't be. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Is there something to do? Yeah. He was found guilty, an innocent man found guilty, so that we, the guilty, could be found innocent. Right? Right, right, right. You yeah. see? Yeah. You so advice, that's yeah. why, you know, if there is a scourging, because, and the reason why I say, say if, because it is there. It does say it. Okay, let's read on. Let's read on. It says, mm -hmm. verse 5, it says, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Yeah. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son who he receives. Now, I don't know. Does your Bible have a little 30? Does, does your Bible have a little number next to that receives? Is there a little yeah, number? Yeah, 319. Revelation 319. Proverbs. Mm -hmm. No, it says Revelation. It says right? Revelation. 34? Uh... No, I mean, uh, next to, next to, uh, verse 6. At the end of verse 6, there should be a little number. Is there a little number? Mm -mm, like a star. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, star. Yeah, star. look, that's what I'm talking about. Go down there. Next to 6. It says 6. 1137, text omits, attempted. Next to 6. Is there a 6 down there? Is there a 6 down there? 12, 6. Proverbs 3.11. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that's see, that's right. telling you because that's a quote. Uh, that verse, that's a quote. And okay. that's why when there's a number mm -hmm. at okay, the bottom, yes, yes, yes. it's quoting Old Testament. Okay. So, so let's go there. Proverbs 12.6. Okay. Yeah. 12.6? Yeah. No, no, that's what it's Proverbs. Proverbs 12.6. No. Proverbs 3. No, it's saying it's Hebrews 12.6. Oh, 12, sorry, 6. sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. oh. Okay. 12.6, okay. So it's saying what? It's, it's you said Proverbs. Proverbs 3.11. Okay, 12. okay, look at that. Okay. You Proverbs 3.11? Yeah, because okay. that's what it's quoting. And that's okay. why I say if there is a scourging, it's something like what I had. It's not like what people make it out to be. Right, right, right. They, right because right. people make it out to you have to be scared because he's going to deal with you harsh yeah. now. Okay, because look, there's a scourging. Mm -hmm. He's going to deal yeah. with you harshly like he's still a judge. Like uh -huh. you're still a criminal standing before a judge. When the Bible says in Hebrews 
that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace whenever we need it. It says that we can come boldly through the blood of Jesus. It mm -hmm. says that in chapter 10. So there's a boldness. Everywhere in Hebrews, it talks about a boldness in approaching God. Right, correct, yeah. And getting mercy and grace anytime we need it. Mm -hmm. And that it's the throne of grace, not judgment. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what it says in Hebrews. Uh, are you feeling me? So all of a sudden, let's take this scourging to a whole nother level and say, oh, he'll scourge you. Oh, mm. Where's the boldness in approaching a throne of grace? Mm. Mm. It doesn't make any, am I making sense? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it doesn't but I fit see the where people yeah. misinterpret. Right. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at yeah. that. Let's look at it. You tell me what it says in, in uh, 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 Proverbs 11 and 13. Mm -hmm. 11. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son with whom he delights. Okay, so you see the word scourging. It's not even there. Mm -mm. Right. Proverbs 3.12. That's what I have too. For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects the child in whom he delights. Now it's quoting that scripture, but scourging isn't even there. Right, right. So remember, this was written in Hebrew, and whatever, mm -hmm. however way they interpreted that scripture into yes. English, yes, it became it became more, scourging. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Yeah, right. But right. if they're quoting that scripture, that's not even there. Mm -hmm. See, so that that's why I say, if there is a scourging, if, mm -hmm. right? Because nowhere else in the New Testament does it talk like that. Right. That he scourges you. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, that's it true. doesn't talk like that. Corinthians it's is not merciful it. to your unrighteousness. Yeah. Impute Jesus becoming sin for you, not imputing your sin. You right? Would, you would go against all that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That it's his obedience that makes you righteous, not yours. Right? So mm -hmm. there's all kinds of th It goes against all the other stuff that is, you know. Let's look at this one. This is good. It's another one that they use. See, the thing is, they pull this out of Hebrews. This is where you find most of these scary warning verses mm. is in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And you got to look at who he's writing to. He's yes. writing to Hebrews, people that are still living under the law. Yes. They're still coming so out from he, under they animal would sacrifices. Understand Proverbs. So, what is the yeah. sin he's mainly dealing with in Hebrews? The mm -hmm. sin of unbelief, the sin of rejecting Jesus and staying under the law, yes. staying with animal sacrifices and, and just trotting Jesus' blood underfoot and don't even care, yes. right? Mm -hmm. That I'd rather go with animal blood than the blood of Jesus. That's what he's dealing with in Hebrews because that's what, that's what they're doing. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 10, he walks you through that stuff. Chapter 10. Yeah, go to Hebrews chapter 10. Watch this. This is heavy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, look at, okay. Let's start at Hebrews chapter 10. Oh my gosh, this is good. Okay, let's start at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Okay. For the law having it, see, he's dealing with the law. Okay? He's dealing with Hebrews, pe the Hebrew people living under the law. Okay? He doesn't, t see, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things, they can never, with those sacrifices which they offered continually year after year, make those who approach perfect. Mm -hmm. Why is he saying those don't make you perfect? Because it wasn't, uh, they're not infinite. It's not the blood of the Lamb of God. It's the blood of just animals. You know why he says these those didn't make you perfect? He covers yeah, it. Because it only this, covers it a year. Because this one <laughs> you have does. Keep, you have to keep doing yeah, it. Right, right, right. right. If you go look, yeah, at, go look at 1014 and he says, by this one sacrifice, you it's have been done. perfected forever. Go once, in verse right, 14. Right. It once, says that. So that's all. why he's saying this, because these could those, this what you're doing yeah. today, because yeah. right, it's time. They're still doing that yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. And he's saying, so this what you're doing doesn't do this. Right. Those cannot make you perfect. Yes. You have to this come one back next year. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. See, that's what he's dealing And all yeah. through Hebrews, up until this point, that's all he's been dealing with. Yeah. 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 That's what he's been dealing with, is sacrifices, right. telling you what you get, get under the new. Yes. My pages Amen. keep coming out. I have to keep doing this. Oh, Sorry. I'm going to have to borrow that later. because I know, right? Tab. <laughs> oh, wow. My yeah. poor tabs are falling out. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love this Bible. <laughs> I don't, I'll tape it forever. I'll keep taping it as long as I have to tape it. I'm just, I you take it to a bookbinder. And Look at these highlights. Look at these highlights. No, I love this Bible. Why I'm happy to tape it. Okay, so you see this? Okay, so we just saw in, uh, uh, so, okay, so in, in, okay, so number one, those couldn't make you perfect. Okay. This one does. Yes. Are you perfect? 
Um, perfect You've been perfected, perfected yes. forever, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not right. perfect in my actions, my behavior, right. yeah. my thoughts. thoughts you know, yeah. my uh, you know, I, I could still you know, concerning sin, I I might still have to cut my arm off yeah, if right. I, yeah. if I'm under the law. Because that's what I would have to do. He, Jesus said, cut your arm off. It causes you to sin. Otherwise, you, you're in danger of going to hell, man. I mean, what the, you, you, he says it's better for you to, to, he says, if your eye causes, if your arm causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. He says your arm because of your actions. And he says your eye because of your thought life. He's taking it to a whole other level. That's what he's doing. In, oh, yeah. in, that's what he's doing Good in Sermon on the Mount. Oh, yeah. He's taking it to a whole other level. You mm-hmm. thought it was just because of what you see, how, what people can see in your life. What about what's going on behind the scenes? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. What about the skeletons in your closet? Yeah. You know, what about the, what's going on in your mind? What about how you really view people? You yes. know, it's not just, you know, what yes. you're doing. It's how you're, what you're seeing. And that's why he says if your arm and your eye, yeah. right? Yeah. And he says if your arm causes you to sin, cut it off because it's better for you to go through life maimed than to go to hell with your whole body. You know, right. and then he says your eye too, because it's a little deeper than that. That's where he's going deeper. He's taking the law a little deeper. That's what he's doing. But if that was the case, we would still have to, but, but he says, he says in, he, in, in Sermon on the Mount, he says to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Mm-hmm. What does he say here? Those can never make you perfect. Right. It doesn't matter. The, the performance never made you perfect. Mm-hmm. And as he's saying here, that even the sacrifices never really made you perfect. Right. The sacrifice could cover your sins, mm-hmm. right, for a year till the next day of atonement. Mm-hmm. But they could never make you perfect. Right. They right. could only cover. Yeah. Right. They could never take them away. That's what he says. Look what he says. Verse 2. For then would they not have ceased to be offered those sacrifices, animal blood, because the worshipers once purged, once purged, what does that mean? Cleansed. Yeah. Right? One time. Once cleansed would have had no more consciousness of sins. They wouldn't be aware of, oh my gosh, I'm, I sinned, I'm going to be punished. Oh no, there's punishment coming for my sin. I better make more animal sacrifices. That's right. what he means by consciousness of sin. Mm-hmm. Constant awareness of sin and punishment. Okay, but how many know in the New Covenant, that's why, he says, that's why he's mentioning this. We should not have that type of consciousness of sin fearing punishment from God because Jesus was punished for us. Okay, right. right? That's what he's talking about. It's not that you're not aware of sin. It's not you don't hate sin. It's just not this weight of sin punishment, consciousness of sin and punishment hanging over, Hang hanging over me. Because yeah. Jesus was punished for me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But, verse 3, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance of sins every year. See, yes. Day of Atonement, got to keep doing this. You got to yeah. keep doing this over and over and over again. Constant reminder, time to do sacrifices, time to blood atonement, Right? For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could even take away sin. See, those could never take them away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's saying that because those could never make you perfect. Those could never really take your sins away. Mm-hmm. The reason he's saying this is because we have a sacrifice today that does. Mm-hmm. It does make you perfect. It does take them away. That's why he says in verse 12, I mean verse 10, he says, right, verse 10, it says, By that will we have been sanctified, right? Mm-hmm. Once and for all. That yeah. means your sins have been removed. You've been yeah. cl- declared holy. Amen. Yeah. That's what it means to be sanctified. Through the one body of Jesus Christ, once and, and for, for all. all. Something that those sacrifices could never do. Right. Here's the problem. They were still choosing to go there. And he's mm-hmm. saying, you don't want to go there. You want to go here. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's struggling. That's what he's dealing with. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, verse, t- 14, 14. verse 12. Oh, yeah. But this man, after, okay, let's look at 11. And every priest standing ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which again, they could never take away sins. He keeps saying that. Yeah. Why does he keep repeating they can't take them away? Because this one does. And also mm-hmm. because I saw them, that was what, what they were, the direction they were going is back to the animal blood. Absolutely. The Hebrews. You know? Oh, I mean, gosh, it's hard to preach. You can't yeah. put new wine into old wineskins. That's why yeah. he's hammering it. That's hammering what he's doing. Yeah. That's, yeah, what, that's right. what he's doing here. He's trying to put new wine into old wineskins. He's trying to break, make a breakthrough. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. To help them get over that. But the point he's making is those don't do what they were designed to do at that time. They don't, now we have a new design. And it's the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. All right, so those don't do any good anymore. You're going somewhere that's not going to help you. This is the only help we have. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, Jesus said. I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He's the deal now. He went to the cross and he changed everything. So let's not toy with that, right? 
That's yeah. heavy. Yeah. So verse 12, okay, so those could never take away sins. But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down at the right hand of God. Mm-hmm. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made a foot, footstool, for by that one offering he has perfected forever, forever, perfect forever. You've been perfected forever. Mm-hmm. I'm not perfect, but I've been perfected. Amen. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it's forever. Mm-hmm. You see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with those people. Now, now understand he says the Holy Spirit testifies to this. Mm-hmm. He's saying and that he, uh, he's, uh, he says, I will put my laws into their hearts and their minds I will write them. Then he adds, in their sins and their lost deeds, I will remember no more. Mm-hmm. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Therefore, brethren, having boldness. I don't know about you, but I approach God boldly. Amen. Mm-hmm. Okay, not because I'm not sinning, not because I'm Mr. Joe obedient, super dedicated, mm-hmm. super committed. I approach God boldly, watch. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, that's what we count. It's on. Not be- yeah. Yeah, that's why I can go boldly to God, okay? Because it's not a throne of judgment. It is a throne of grace. Elsewhere it says we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace whenever I need it. It says that in Hebrews chapter 4. Yeah. Okay, so there was a boldness, but it's because it's a throne of grace. There was a boldness because it was his blood. That's Amen. where the boldness comes from. Okay, so I'm trusting in the blood. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. By a new and living grade, which he consecrated for us. He consecrated how? By his, through his, with his blood. Yeah. Consecrated way to God. Okay, now watch this. We'll through go. the veil that is his flesh. Ah, ah. thank you. Open Throw that the in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The and, curtain. yeah. Yeah. And verse 20, yeah, because um, it says, it's in verse 22, so let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of your works. No. It don't say that. No. Or do you see that? Verse 22, no. let no. us draw near with a, a true heart in full assurance of faith. faith. Mm-hmm. Not works. Right? Right. Full assurance of your obedience, your dedication, full assurance of faith. The Bible says, just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, but then watch this. Verse 26. Now, this is where you find this. After saying all of this beautiful stuff, perfected forever, sanctified once and for all, able to come boldly through the blood. Right? All of that. All of a sudden, you see this. Mm -hmm. But, verse 26. But if we sin willfully, see that? Yeah, yeah. You just take everything away. Mm-hmm. All of that perfection, yeah. sanctified once and for all, able to come boldly through the blood. But if you sin willfully, if you really, if you, if only, this is only for people who sin accidentally. <laughs> it, yeah, but if yeah, you yeah. sin willfully, mm-hmm. see, yeah, yeah. that's ridiculous, but that's how people teach it. That's how mm-hmm. most, most people, probably 80% of Christians, would read this that way. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. You, know, you see how ridiculous that is? Yeah. In context? Mm-hmm. You have to look at context. And what is he dealing with? Going under sacrifice. He's dealing with sacrifices. He's dealing with trusting in animal blood instead of yes. the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's the sin he's dealing with. It's the unforgivable sin of rejecting Jesus Christ. That's the willful sin he's dealing with. That's the only sin he's dealt with for 10 chapters up until this, this mm-hmm. verse. Only sin he's been dealing with is going under animal, uh, is rejecting Jesus, going another way. It's only sin he's dealt with. Mm-hmm. So that's got to be it. And if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there's no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, right? But a certain fearful expect- expectation of judgment mm. and a fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Okay, he who despised Moses' law died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse will be the punishment, do you suppose, will be he who thought worthy, will be, will he be thought worthy, see, you're worthy of punishment. Mm -hmm. He, okay, now understand, I thought Jesus was punished for me. Right, right. I thought he became sin for me. Okay, that's somebody who believes that, who's trusting in that. Right, right, right. He's talking about a punishment for those who, the adversaries, the enemies of God. Jesus died for his enemies, but don't receive that death. And trust in that death and the power in it, 
mm. and the power of the Holy Spirit coming into the believer, mm. if you're not there, then you do, you're worthy because you have trampled the Son of Foot, the Son of God underfoot, counting the blood. See, what do you say? We can come boldly through the blood. You're counting the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, a common thing. Like, it doesn't mean anything. Like, grace doesn't mean anything. Yeah, you're like people preach gra grace. Great grace under the bus. That's a good point. Yeah. That's like throwing grace under the bus. You're throwing the blood under the bus. The grace. Saying, I don't need grace. Gra yeah, yeah, I don't need the blood. Yeah. I don't trust in that blood. I trust I in animals. I, I trust in, I trust in yeah. my own works. You know? I trust in something else, anything else, yeah. but the blood right. of Jesus. Right? Right. It is all the blood of Jesus. What do you say? We can come into the Holy through the blood. So it's all about the blood. And he's yeah. saying, so there are those who are trusting in the blood and those who don't. That would be the willful sin. You're not trusting in the blood of Jesus. You're counting it as a common thing, like it doesn't really mean anything. Isn't that what it says? Yeah, it says done despite. And insult of the Spirit of grace. That is the unforgivable sin. What does he say, the unforgivable sin? Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Go look up blasphemy. You know what, ver what word comes up to define it? Insult. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about insulting the spirit of grace, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the only unforgivable sin. It's rejecting Jesus Christ. It's unbelief. Right? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 31. Oh, remember up here, look, look, I want you to go back because I saw something here. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to hope for but a certain fearful expectation of judgment. Right? Yeah. He's talking about judgment. Right. Okay? Jesus said those who believe on him will never be judged. Yes. So what is it? Jesus said that those who believe on him, he says those who believe that the Father sent him will have eternal life, will not come under judgment. You've already mm -hmm. passed from death and you've life. already passed from death and life. Mm -hmm. Remember, we got looked at that verse a dozen times. Mm -hmm. You have eternal life, you'll not come under judgment, you've already passed from death and life. That's for those who believe that God sent him. Right? Mm -hmm. This is talking about judgment. It's obviously not for a believer. It's right. obviously not for, because judgment is not for the believer. Right. Jesus said those who believe will not be condemned, will not be judged. But those who don't believe are condemned already for not believing in the Son. That's who the judgment is for. That's who the condemnation is for, who those who are not trusting in the blood, who are not trusting in the Son. Okay, look at verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now there are those that are, have to fear falling into his hand, and there are those that Jesus said, nobody can snatch you out of my hand. Right. That's a good contrast. Right? Yeah. yeah. So either you fear falling into his hand or you're already in his hand. And when Jesus says that nobody can snatch you out of my hand, nobody can snatch you out of my father's hand, people look at it like this. Oh, aren't you afraid of slipping through his fingers? Mm -hmm. No, because he's, he's saying this as a sense of security. Yeah. He's saying nobody can snatch you out of my hand. Try. He's holding you like this. It's yeah. the reason he's saying it is so that you feel secure. Nobody can snatch you out of my hand. There's a movie out there called Kung Fu where this guy, you ever seen that movie Kung Fu? Dave Carradine? No. Well, he was this Kung Fu guy. He was a Kung Fu master, and he was in training. And this guy would come out with a little pebble in his hand. He would say, snatch the pebble from my hand. And he would try, and he would, was, he was, ever since he was a kid, he was always trying to, he'd always, he's, he'd always take it away before he can grab it. And all of a sudden, after he was grown, and he had matured, and he had, you know, yeah. all of a sudden, he said, yeah, he, he, he snatches it and he goes back expecting to see the pebble and it's gone. You know, you see, he wasn't oh. able to snatch the pebble because he was snatch, snake taking it away, right? Uh -huh. But he was holding it like, he was holding it like this. When he went, he would hold it like this. When he tried to take it, he'd go like this and take it back. Otherwise, it would, right. if he just went like this, it would fall out. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's right? a good illustration. Uh, right? Yeah. 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 This is what Jesus is talking about. Yeah. You can't be snatched out of my hand because I'm holding you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that heavy? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good point. Yeah. So he says it's a fearful thing to fall in hand. I don't have to fear that. Okay. Right. See the fear. He said, "I'm not giving you a spirit again to fear." He says that in Romans chapter eight. Yeah. Right. 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 It's the, a comfort. Oh my gosh! He's yeah. a, we're supposed to walk in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. That's what it says in the book of Acts. It's not just fear of the Lord. It's fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. So meaning that if you have the Holy Spirit, if your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, there's nothing to fear. Right. Okay, there is a fear. The fear of the Lord is always there, but we have a comfort of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Believers mm -hmm. have, are living from a different place yeah. right. than unbelievers, yeah. or that people that, like he's saying here, that are trampling the blood of Jesus underfoot. Yeah. Well, we're not there. 
right? So we're, we're relying on the, on the blood of Jesus. We're relying on the blood of Jesus. We, 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 we see that as our approach to God. Yeah. I can come boldly through the blood. That's, that's my whole approach. Those are people who are against the gospel. Oh, my gosh. You, uh, see? And watch this. This is heavy. This, this, this wraps it all up. Okay, go to verse 38. This is how you got to read context. See, in Romans, where you find that war, that scary verse, willful sin, judgment, fury, indignation, devour the adversaries, right? You're trampling the blood of Jesus underfoot. You're insulting the spirit of grace. Well, you see all that scary stuff? Look, look what we saw what's at the beginning, mm-hmm. right? Perfected, right? Those couldn't perfect you, but this one does, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, right? Sanctified once and for all, able to come boldly through the blood. We mm-hmm. saw all that at the beginning. Right. Watch this at the end. Okay, you got to look at context. Okay. Okay, because that verse is in the middle of all this. Watch this. Look at verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Now obviously these people don't have that faith. Mm-hmm. The ones that are fearful of judgment. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong with their faith. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right, right. There's in the wrong That's place. why they're fearful. Th- that's why they're, mm-hmm. they should fear falling into the hands of the living God because there's something going on with their faith. Mm-hmm. You go back to Hebrews. You go, that's why he goes into Hebrews 11. And he's commending all these people for their faith. Right. Right? Because right. there's a faith issue. Right. You go, go read Hebrews 11. It's a Hebrews hall of faith. He's commending all these people that were sinners, but he's commending them for their faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you go read all those people's stories in Hebrews 11, there's all kinds of sin in their lives. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. He mentions David. He committed adultery. Mm-hmm. Right? Murder. You know, there's Moses. He, he wasn't even allowed to go into the promised land. He mentions him and his faith. He doesn't land on the fact that he, you know... He had a temper issue, temperament problem, mm-hmm. killed, killed an Egyptian, threw down the stone tablets. Yeah. He, had, he had a temperament. He had anger mm-hmm. issues. Mm-hmm. And he was even, wasn't even allowed to go into the promised land because he, he, he struck the, water of, the, the rock of Mirabah. He struck yes. the water when God told him Twice. to speak to the rock. Yeah. Right. And he struck the rock out of anger. He, was yeah. saying, you be, he said to speak to the rock and, 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 and tell the people... And instead, he yelled at the people, and he struck the rock. Yeah. You know, and he said, because of what you did there, you're not even going to get in to go into the promised land. Right. And here in Hebrews chapter 11, God is commending him for his faith. Amen. He's not landing on that. Yeah. Right. He's not yeah. landing on David's sin with Bathsheba and his murdering Uriah. He's commending him for his faith. Mm-hmm. See, so there's a faith issue going on here. Mm-hmm. That's why he says at the end of all this, he says, 38, now the just shall live by faith. But if we draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. He quotes a verse there. Okay. But look what he says. But Regina, you are not of those who draw back. Mm -hmm. You see that? He's telling you who you are. Mm -hmm. He's identifying a Christian. He's identifying a believer as opposed to somebody who would trample the blood of Jesus underfoot. Somebody who would see it a Mm -hmm. fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. As opposed to all that, he's saying that's not you. Mm -hmm. We are not those who draw back. Right. To perdition. Right. But of those who believe to the saving of the soul. See that we're believers. Mm-hmm. We're trusting in the blood. Mm-hmm. See, see that's context. Yeah. That's heavy, huh? Yeah. Wow. See how you gotta see would see, and that's one of the scriptures that they pull out. Mm-hmm. There's fearful judgment if you willfully sin, mm-hmm. as if they don't. Right. As if their only if their sin is their sin is only accidental. Yeah, right. I would never willfully right. sin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I am so holy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. I would never lost. I totally control my anger. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so I I'm never greedy. I'm never selfish. I'm never proud. Yeah, right. I yeah. never willfully sin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Right. Right. That's the poison Jesus went to the cross and suffered for the sins of the. It wasn't. He died for the, the willful sin or the unwillful. The accident. He went to the He went to the cross and he died for the accidental sins of the world. Yeah. He. It says in. It says in First John that he not only died for our sins. He died for the sins of the whole world. Oh, no, period. Yeah, those, those, not yeah. accidental ones. Not just certain sins. <laughs> Are you feeling me? See, I mean, it's almost comical when I put it that way. Yeah, right. Okay. It, it, but it's sad. There's people that preach this stuff. Right? Right. Look at this one. Let's go back. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians. I'm trying to get you to see something. Where people, where people are getting this stuff from. Right? right? Mm-hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Again, you've got to look at context. 
Because what do we see there? He talks about all this stuff. He talks about all that we get in Christ and the, ble- the w- w- perfected and sanctified forever and perfected forever and all this sanctified once and for all and boldly able to come into the blood and all that good stuff. Okay, he talks about there. He says that he'll remember your sins no more. Right? All right? He said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. said a lot of good stuff there. Okay, but then he throws, then we take away from that when he, we read that other verse. Okay? Yeah. But then we saw at the end, he says, but you're not one of them. Right. You're not of those who do that, who draw back. That's not you. And he doesn't want you to, he's telling you that so you don't think it's you. Yeah. It's Why like, would he say that yeah. unless, if, unless he's trying to convince you that that is not you? Yeah, well, otherwise, it's, what, why put it in there in the first so, place? Right? So let's be convinced that's not me. Because that's how you're going to be able to grow and mature is because you, when people try and say, oh, yeah, well, yeah. dude, that, what you're saying, that's not me. Right. Okay, you're trying to identify me with that. I identify me with Christ, the right. righteousness of Christ. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, you're trying to identify me with that as one of those evildoers or one of those people who might do that or do that or, or you know, might, might fail to obey or, do, do, or might, you know, might deserve some harsh judgment from God. That's not me. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm living under grace, and, and yeah. that, that's undeserved. Yeah. So you're trying yeah. to make me sound like I might deserve this, this, or this. I'm living under grace, yes. and I don't deserve grace. Right, right. right. He says he'll be merciful to our unrighteousness. Oh my gosh, he does. He says Jesus became sin for you. He became sin for you. Mm -hmm. So that you could be the righteousness of God in him. It's a trade-off. It's an exchange life. It's not even a changed life. It's an exchange life that will change your life. Your life will change because if you're you're believing right, you will do right. If you believe right, you will do right. Okay? But believing wrong can steal so much. Watch this. Verse 9. For, uh, 1 First Corinthians, Corinthians 6, 9. 6 9. Uh-huh. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Okay, do you, do people throw that out there. Well, the unrighteous yeah. won't, enter, won't inherit the kingdom of God. Number one, he says inherit. So it's just something that's going to be left to me. It's something that is given to me. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't really earn an inheritance. Oh, that's a good point. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, you don't true. earn an yeah. inheritance. It's a gift, yeah. And, and on top of that, who, who inherits eternal life? The believers. The righteous. Yeah. Right. The ones that are created righteous and truly holy because of the blood of Jesus, because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Right. He says he is now imputing his righteousness unto those who believe, and he's doing this freely by his grace. Uh-huh. It says that in Romans chapter 3. Mm-hmm. So there is a righteousness God is giving you for your faith. Faith. It yeah. is a faith righteousness. Yeah. So I am not the unrighteous. Mm-hmm. I am an heir. Well, he said, I am a co-heir with Christ. So I am inheriting the kingdom of God. But it's, I'm a co-heir with Christ. I'm getting it because I'm one with Christ. That's where I'm a co-heir with Christ. That's where I inherit eternal life. And, it's, and I am created righteous. I, I'm rolled with his righteousness. Mm-hmm. Are you feeling me? Mm-hmm. Then it says, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, homosexuals, sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, extortionists, will inherit the kingdom of God. See, they throw that out there to tell you, see, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. As if you've got to earn this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Busy, yeah. You've got to earn it. Where, where's Jesus' death on the Amen. cross? Where's the punishment that he, where's the debt that he paid for me? Where's the suffering on account of my sin? Right. Where is him becoming sin for me? Where yeah. is that? Yeah, and we all have a little bit of everything oh, my, in here. Yeah, Didn't yeah, it, if you, if you look at that, yeah. he says, nor adulterers. Nor yeah. adulterers. You know what Jesus yeah. did in Sermon on the Mount? He said, if you even lust, Amen. you've already committed adultery. Amen. Right? Idolaters. Right? Yeah, we always who, put, who is we, your we, God? Yeah. We always put other things. Uh, sure. Him. Yeah. Well, James says under law, if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of all anyway. Yes. So if you're, a se- if you're a believer, you're not guilty of any, period. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So, the, but there is a life change going on where if you, this might, this is what, look what he says in verse 11. This is my point. This yeah. might have been you. There mm-hmm. might have been some of this going on. And you might have a little something of that still right. because nobody's, nobody all of a sudden, just because you become a Christian, everything's just hmm, squeaky clean. Yeah. It, it doesn't right. work that way. Even after five or ten years, you're still not Mr. Squeaky Clean. It's a yeah. process. Mm-hmm. There's a, pro- a growth of process going on here for everybody and anybody. Right. Okay? And like Paul said, even Paul said, I'd rather boast of my weakness. Paul said this he hasn't arrived yet. Paul said yeah. he hasn't arrived yet. Yeah. 
Huh? Paul said he Paul said, arrived. I haven't arrived yet. Yeah, you I, I, yeah. I, I, he, he, yeah. Said, he said, I'm not perfect. I haven't arrived yet. Now, he said I'm not perfect because he's talking about his actions, his behavior. He's talking about, yeah, yeah. you know, outside of his spirit, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. says, I'm not perfect. I haven't arrived. Your spirit has been perfected forever. He's talking about I'm not perfect in everything I do. And, I, you know, he yeah. said he's talking about his actions, his behavior. Yeah. He said, I'm not perfect. I haven't arrived yet. See, that's the context is I haven't, I haven't, I'm not where everything I should be just yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I haven't, I'm not perfect, I haven't arrived yet, but this one thing I do, I forget what is behind, I press on toward the goal. He just keeps moving forward. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get stuck in a rut. Yeah. People want to put you in a rut where yeah. you get stuck mm -hmm. yeah. and, and confessing all your sins and apologizing and begging for forgiveness and crying for mercy and all this weird stuff that they tell you you got to do to get right with God. I am right with God. He gave me his Amen. rightness. Mm -hmm. He imputed his righteousness to me for my faith. I am right with God. Mm -hmm. It's not on account of my behavior. I didn't earn it. Yes. It's undeserved, unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's grace. Mm -hmm. Now watch this, verse 11. After talking about all this fornicators, idolaters, mm -hmm. adulterers, right? After saying all that, he says, As so are you, <laughs> are you so feeling are you? me? Like he said over <laughs> yeah. there, like he said over there, We're but you, like are, the, you are not back. those who draw back. He yeah. walks through all this. He makes, says some scary things. He talks about falling into the hands yeah. of the living God. He says, but that's not you. Yeah. And he's saying the same thing here. You were washed. But that was some of you. Mm -hmm. But you were washed, right? Mm -hmm. You were sanctified. You were justified, right? Don't we have to believe that he justifies mm -hmm. the ungodly? Mm -hmm. And then he'll, if you believe, if he says, if, oh, my gosh, this is good. Romans chapter 4, verse 4. It says, for those who work not, but believe that he justifies the ungodly. Hello? Mm -hmm. Okay. He'll take that faith and he'll give you righteousness. Right? It's a faith righteousness. Yeah. But I got to believe that he's justifying my little ungodly self. You mm -hmm. see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are justified. We are sanctified. We are washed. We're Christians. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are robed with his righteousness. Amen. We are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, in first, oh my God, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, it says that, that Jesus was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there's no sin. I'm in him. Mm -hmm. Are you in him? Mm -hmm. Yes. He says in him there's no sin. Right, right. right, right. Jesus became sin for me. Mm -hmm. I'm robed with the righteousness of God. Created righteous and truly holy. His obedience has made me righteous, according to Romans chapter 5. I'm righteous. It's not my righteousness. It's not a works righteousness. It's his righteousness. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. And he's giving me freely from my faith. Doesn't the Bible say the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus? It's a gift. God's given it to those who believe. <laughs> right? So again, context tells you everything. You got to look at context. And number one, at, the, at nine, at the very beginning, he says that, that he's dealing with people that are unrighteous. That's not believers. Believers are created righteous and truly holy, right? Mm -hmm. And he ends with saying, that might have been you, this list of sinner, sinners. Mm -hmm. That might have been you, a sinner, mm -hmm. but you were washed. Right. You're a saint. Mm -hmm. You've been sanctified. What do we see? Once and for all. Yeah. That means you were washed and it's done forever. Whew. Oh my gosh, this is good. Okay, so watch this. Go to John 2.23. Let's look at this. John 2.23. Now, I, I, I looked at this because the people that try and tell you, they put a heavy burden on your back that they don't carry. They tell mm -hmm. you you got to confess all your sins. They tell you that God holds you more accountable. You got to really bump up your, your, your works. You know, you got to, you, 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 you know, you know without, faith without works is dead. You got to really get busy working. And they tell you all this stuff, but watch this. You ready? Mm -hmm. John 2. Now, I don't take away from works, but it is God working in me mm -hmm. to will, and I give him the glory. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, if you must glory, glory in the Lord. I give him all the credit for any change in my life, any motivation Amen. that is moving me toward living godly. Amen. This is a God thing. The Bible says that we are God's workmanship created in Christ. Mm -hmm. I am a workmanship of God. God is making this change come about in me. Mm -hmm. I credit him for that, and I can't help, I can't stop. Hey, look, who's coming? Oh, yeah, Aram. Aram and Sharon. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good, good. Good, good. <laughs> Are we, 
No worries. Right, what time is it? Oh, we've got some time. A little time. Okay, here we go. You ready? Okay. What did I say? Verse, verse um, 23. 223. 223. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Okay, here it is. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, Jesus, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. Okay, so they're believing on him because of the word. He said one place, he said, if you don't believe me because of the words that I say, believe me because of the things that I do. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. But even though, he says, but Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. Mm-hmm. He knows mm-hmm. he knew that our hearts. hearts are deceitful above. Yeah. Uh, what did we read last week? Yeah, our, hearts are, our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Mm-hmm. Who can know it? Mm-hmm. Nobody knows how bad you are. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, and that's why Jesus summoned them out. He's, he's, br- he's breaking down the law and showing you how bad you are because that's what the law is good for. The mm-hmm. Romans 3.19 says the law was given to show you your... Uh, to, to silence your pride and to show yeah. you your guilt. Yeah. So yeah. that's what the law is good for. So when Jesus is preaching that kind of stuff, he's ministering law mm-hmm. because he knows what is in your heart. Yeah. yeah. The problem is you don't. Yeah. Nobody knows. Uh, right? He yeah. says, who knows? Yeah. Right. right? The heart is deceitful right. of all the things that does be wicked. Who can know it? Very uh, Other translations yeah. say, mm-hmm. no one knows how bad it is. No one knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and did not need need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Mm-hmm. Are you feeling me? Yeah, mm-hmm. so Gee, that's why we need a better way. Yeah. The law didn't cut it. Yeah. It just showed you what he, th- yeah. that you're a mess. Yeah. Right? It just silenced your pride so you stopped right. bragging on your goodness and, and showed you your guilt. Showed you mm-hmm. your guilty of breaking these laws. Therefore, mm-hmm. you would put your faith in the animal blood. Mm-hmm. Right? right? And mm-hmm. trust in the blood of animals to atone for your sin. Right. Beautiful. But Jesus is taking you away from all of that. Yeah. You know, so you don't have to be buried under law and see what a pathetic loser you are. You could just through faith in Jesus Christ see I'm a new creature. All mm-hmm. things are new. Right. I've been perfected forever. Mm-hmm. And, and somehow some, this has got to be the motivation God is using to motivate to, to, not mm-hmm. to live perfectly, but to live right. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a, it, like I say, you have a bend toward sin when, without Christ, but in Christ you have a new bend and you bend toward Amen. righteousness. And you will sin a lot less. You will you will live more holy yeah. and godly than you ever could without him. Yeah. You know? Amen. It's, it's, it's a fact. But you, you see that? Yeah, so that's, it's uh, out of love and gratitude for that that it changes us. Mm. Our behavior and our thoughts. Mm, what, me, what made me think of this verse? was when Dylan was telling me, I'm sorry, what, no what, what, what Dylan was telling me mm-hmm. was that these people, they tell him, well, God holds you more accountable as soon as you know. It's you like, know it's, like, it, it's yeah. horrible when you have ministers that will do this finger pointing, pointing thing. The finger, yeah. You know, they need to include themselves. You know, when yeah. they're saying you, he holds yeah. you more accountable, they should be saying he holds us more accountable or something yes. to that effect yes. if they're going to go there. Just more humble. Right. Okay, because yeah. it's, like it's like they're acting like I don't, I'm not, I don't mm-hmm. have to answer to that, but mm-hmm. you do. Mm-hmm. You know, like, because yeah. if he's making us more accountable, then we're all accountable. If he's making us more accountable to sin, then we're all accountable for sin. Amen. Okay? So either we're accountable for our sin, or Jesus was held accountable for our sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? No yeah. No jeopardy, no double jeopardy. Seriously. Yeah. But God, this, hearing the message that I, I'm sharing with you and showing you the scriptures to support it, are, are what, are, see, see, look, look at verse 3, 3-3. Three, three. Mm-hmm. Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. You know what Jesus said in Sermon on the Mount? He said, unless, you're more righteous than the, the, unless your, your mm-hmm. righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, mm-hmm. you cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm. So which is it? You have to decide. Is it, do I got to be born again? He says, unless you're, or do I... heart, unless you're pure in heart, then you won't see the kingdom of God. Yeah, right. It says yeah. in the Sermon on the Mount. Oh, my God, right. In the, 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 Beatitudes? the Beatitudes? Yeah. yeah. Unless you're pure of heart, you're not going to see God. It's impossible. Unless you're more righteous than the Pharisees, you're not going to see it's God. impossible. Here in John, because John goes a whole different Route. Those are synoptic gospels. It's in, they're similar in, in the way they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're written. But John stands alone apart from those. Mm-hmm. He just takes you into what it really, what the real deal is under grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just got to be born again. You got to be a new creature. You just got to receive Jesus and be- believe, right. believe and receive. Mm-hmm. Believe on the Son and receive His Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Believe and receive, and that's the new life of Christ 
in you that is now going to work through you, like, like it's called the fruit of the Holy Spirit, because I'm a branch connected to the vine. Whatever is coming to the, whatever fruit I'm going to bear has got to be the fruit of the vine, right? If I plant an apple seed, mm -hmm. am I going to, is, if I'm a branch connected to that vine, am I going to grow lemons? No. I'm going to grow apples because that's right. what the seed is. So whatever the seed that is planted is growing into the vine, and I'm a branch connected to the vine, I'm going to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Right, right, right. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what am I getting from him? Mm -hmm. Is this love really agape love? The love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all that love I get from him. The Bible says, the, Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Okay, so that love I'm getting from him. The love, joy, the second fruit of the Holy Spirit. G the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? So that joy is of the Lord, so I'm getting that joy from him, mm -hmm. right? And, and then I pass that on to others, Amen. right? And, and, and the peace, the Bible says that we have peace with God because we've been justified by faith. Mm -hmm. So that, that peace I'm getting is from him. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that God is, in the patience, love, joy, peace, patience. He says that God is long-suffering, that he doesn't want anyone to perish, right. but that we all right. come to repentance. So that long suffering is patience. Mm -hmm. So see, I just mentioned the first four, the fruit of the Spirit, just the first four. That's love, joy, peace, patience. But it's coming from him to me mm -hmm. yeah. to manifest in me, yes. through me, For others. to others. Right. Yeah. Okay, but you got to be getting that from him. You got to mm -hmm. see there is joy in the Lord. There is love from the Lord. There is peace with the Lord. There is there's patience. God has patience with me, not willing that I should ever, ever perish. Amen. See, but th that's what we got to be getting to be giving. To, you got to get love to give love. Mm -hmm. The question is, what kind of love are you getting? Mm -hmm. Is it a love that says that I'm holding you more accountable? Yeah. You better step it up. Yeah, right. It, right. It, that, it, is yeah. it that kind of that's, love? No, that's fear. Or is it agape love? Yeah, agape. Love. No fear here. Right. Unconditional love. Uh, doors yeah. wide open. Yeah. You know, you just take one step toward me. I'm going to hug you, love you, kiss you, shower you with gifts. I'm going to, yeah. oh, my gosh, you're, you know, ring on your hand, finger, sandals on your feet. You know, I'm going to kill a fatted calf and just party, mm -hmm. for, even though the sinful son who disgraced me so much. Yes. Just the fact that he's home, I'm going to party, still throw a party for him. Yeah. You know, I'm going to defend you against your, your stone-throwing yeah. brother. You know, all of that kind of love. Mm. That's what you're getting. Yeah. That's the pit, right picture of God. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the one we ought to be. Yeah. It is. On. That's why Jesus is telling that story of the prodigal son, so that you understand that God is like that. This is what you're going to get because of me. Yeah. I'm yeah. providing this kind of relationship with the Father because of what I am about to do for you. Yeah. That's what he's painting a picture of. It's, uh, that relationship can really be that good. Yeah. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jesus should know. He knows what he's about to do. He's God. He knows why he's here. Yeah. He knows what he's about to provide for you through this grace of God. He knows what's coming. So mm -hmm. let me paint a picture of with this father that good. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. We're almost done already. I can't believe we went through all this already. Ooh. Okay, so... Um, uh, so we went to 223. We went there, right? Mm -hmm. We went to 223. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay, says he knows all men. So right there, the reason I went to that one about he knows all men is because Dylan's telling me how people tell you these things, and, and they need to understand they're no, they're no better. Right. They're, if, if I'm going to tell you God's holding you accountable, well, he's holding us all accountable. Right, right. It, if he's holding us yeah. all accountable. Right, at least including themselves, yeah. Then we don't need Jesus. Mm -hmm. I thought that's why I have Jesus, because God, the Bible says I'm accepted in the Beloved. Mm -hmm. It says that in Ephesians chapter 1. I'm accepted right. and beloved. So my yeah. acceptance with God, my able to come boldly to God, as he says, through his blood, it's all about Jesus, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so let's look at this. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go to, um, okay, let's see, what can we do? Let's, 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 let's go through Hebrews. Since we looked at Hebrews, I want you to see what is in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Because you land on these things that are in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just let these, what I'm about to tell you, register, okay. okay, because they're taking a lot of these, these, there's another one in Hebrews chapter 6 that is very scary, um, um, I think it's in chapter 6, there's another one that says, um, yeah, 6-4, uh, mm -hmm. for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift 
and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of, the, of God and the powers of age to come, if they fall away, to renew them to repentance, seeing they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. So they say if you come to God, and you, they use that to say that you can lose your salvation. They say that if you come to God and then you turn away, that it's impossible to come bring them back to repentance. Mm. If, that, if you're making that say that, you know what that means? Let me give you a picture. This is heavy. Suppose Dylan's my son, and he turned away from the Lord, right? If something happened, and he, he turned away. And I, according to this verse, how they interpret it, well, you're done. You're going to hell. Don't even bother mm -hmm. trying to come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't even bother. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can be brought back to repentance. Mm -hmm. You're done. No one tell that you wouldn't tell mom. that to your kid. Mm -hmm. your mom or you wouldn't tell that to your mom or your yeah. dad, somebody you really care about, somebody yeah. you really love. Yeah. You would never. You would say that prodigal son's father, door was always open. Yeah, yes. of course. You can always come home. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. close the door. Right. I would tell prodigal son stories. Yeah. Right? Yeah. About a father right. who's always there. About a father who will never leave you or forsake you. Mm -hmm. Never turn his back on you. That's what forsake means. Right? Right, right. Jesus saying that I will no wise cast you out. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So that's, that's horrible teaching when they put it out that way. They do. It's, really and it, it. it's the way it's mm -hmm. worded. Mm -hmm. It looks like that. It can look like that on the surface. But this is why I want you to see what's in Hebrews, because if you look what else is in Hebrews, you know that can't be saying that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's look at a few in Hebrews real quick. we got a few minutes. Let's go through a few. We'll just take a few minutes and walk through a few of these. Okay, you ready? Sure. Yeah. Number one, let these stick in your brain. Okay. We already saw that you're perfected forever. We already saw that you're sanctified once and for all. We already saw that you can come boldly through the blood. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, we saw that. Watch this. Verse 15. For chapter 4, verse 15. 4? Four? 4, verse 15. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping ahead. 4.15? Yeah. Okay. Okay. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. He's telling you God sympathizes with your weakness. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know? But w was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Okay? Let us. So he's saying... He's saying, let us therefore. You see, there's a there, when there's yeah. a therefore, you've got to see what is that there for. Mm -hmm. Well, the therefore is there because he just said that he sympathizes with your weakness. Yeah. Okay? What does it mean to sympathize with your weakness? Dude, yeah. Yeah. I get it. Uh -huh. You struggle. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I understand where you're coming from. I understand how hard it is. What do you say? He understood the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand what's going on there. Right? He said he couldn't trust himself to them because... He knows what's in the heart of man. Okay, he gets it, but he sympathizes with your weakness. Okay, mm -hmm. therefore, let's, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, not judgment, mm -hmm. and that we may obtain mercy and mm -hmm. find grace to help in Honestly. any time of need. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you need it, whenever you need mercy. When do I need mercy? When you, when you mess up. When I sin. All the time. When do I need grace? All the time. When I say, yeah, <laughs> we know all the grace we can get. Yeah. You know, right. mercy, no punishment. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I don't have to zero in on my sin and confess it. Yeah. I can trust in the mercy of God anytime yeah. I need it. Yeah. And boldness. Not yeah. grovel in the dust, cry. People say yeah. you got to cry for mercy. We've heard that, right? We've heard that yeah, taught in Bible study. Yes. Dylan and I sat in a Bible study under, under, under a pastor who had been a pastor for 20 years. And he says that when you sin, you just cry for mercy. Yeah. Where is the boldness to come and get mercy? Oh, yeah. His cry, cry for mercy isn't boldness. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. He says you could boldly come and it's get showing, it. Showing you fear of punishment. Are you feeling me? Cry for mercy. Yeah. I'm glad we're going here. Okay. So on one hand, mercy. Mercy is withholding punishment. On the other hand, I'm going to give you the opposite of what you deserve. I'm not just going to open the door and let you back in, you little prodigal son, you. I'm not just going to open the door and say, hey, I'm not going to punish you. I'm going to actually shower you with gifts. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm, going to, I'm going to throw a party. We're going to celebrate. I'm going to defend you against your, against your throne, throne stowing brother. Okay, that's grace. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's not just mercy. It's grace. And we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace anytime we need it according to this verse. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's good. See how I put that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to verse, uh, let's see, verse, uh, verse uh, chapter 7. We're just going through a few. 
We'll lead, we'll lead up to 10 and then we'll, we'll, we'll finish, okay? okay. Now, I'm just leading up to you what is here oh, so leading up, up to, to 10 warning, warning, where you yeah. see that warning scripture that says, oh, if you willfully sin, uh, you got to land on these. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't, you know that's not saying that. Okay, mm -hmm. verse 25, 725. Therefore, okay, he, Jesus, is also able to save to the uttermost. That means the uppermost. That means 100%, completely, right? Mm -hmm. You can't get any higher. Uttermost yes. means you can't get any more saved, yes. right? Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Yeah, through the roof. You can't get any more saved than you are, Right. all right? Mm -hmm. Those who come to God by him. What do you say? All those who receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. Okay, you're coming to God through him. He said, nobody comes to the Father except by me. Okay, so we're coming to God through Jesus, period. There's no other way. It's not through animal sacrifices. It's not through, you know, obedience. It's through Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Amen. Mm -hmm. And he says, seen. I don't think your book says seen. My, my translation says seen. It's a King James interpretation. Mm -hmm. Seen, he ever lives to make intercession for them. We need to see this. Okay, yeah. we need to see it. Jesus always has yes. my back. In yes. 1 John chapter 2, it says that even if we sin, he says, I'll write this so you don't sin, but if you do, yeah. meaning even if you do, you have an advocate. Amen. That's what he means by an intercessor. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. what that means. Yeah. And he's talking about even if you sin. Why? Because you're saved to the uttermost. Why? Yeah. Because he came to God through Christ. Amen. You know, you got an intercessor. Even if you sin, you have an advocate, according to 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Are you feeling me? Yeah. Right? Okay, let's go to another one. Look at this one. Verse 12, uh, chapter 8, verse 12. This is God saying this, and we just saw in chapter 10 where the Holy Spirit says the same thing. They're both, in, they're both think alike. They're same both saying the same thing. They both have the same. Jesus isn't doing one thing. The Holy Spirit is doing another thing, mm. and, and God is doing another. The Bible says, says, the Bible refers to that Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jesus and the Holy Spirit are on the same wavelength. Okay, and the Bible, Jesus, and, and, and the Father told the woman at the well, He said, um, God is spirit, and those who worship it must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is spirit, mm -hmm. so He's the Holy Spirit, yeah. right? So they're all the same. Mm -hmm. They all think alike. It's not right. like God is there, you know, it's not like Jesus saying, Father, forgive me, knows not what He do. And it's like that Father says, I'll remember your sins no more, but the Holy Spirit is there convicting you every time you sin. Mm -hmm. That's a misinterpretation of a singular verse. You know, that conviction by the Holy Spirit, it's for unbelief. If you go read the verse, that's what it is. And here it's saying that the Holy Spirit is in link with the Father saying the same thing. Watch mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, verse 12. Verse 12, 812. Yeah, 812. Yeah, it, is that what it says? Yeah. Yeah. It says, verse 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. This is God speaking. Yeah. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Right there he's, now, God does not lie. Yeah. Anything that God says you can take as a promise. Right. And the Bible says it's by these precious promises that we are partakers of his divine nature. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So if he says that he's being merciful to you and righteous, uh -huh. then you are a partaker of his divine nature because you're not unrighteous. Mm -hmm. yeah. He imputed his righteousness. Mm -hmm. So not only is he being merciful to you and righteousness, but he's also imputing his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So you are a partaker of God's divine nature. You are holy. The Bible says you are in, in Ephesians chapter 4 that you are created after God in righteousness and true holiness. Right. You are a partaker of his divine nature. Okay? And it's through, and it's through these precious promises. You've got to believe this. Mm -hmm. For I will be merciful to the righteous. I will remember their sins no more. Right? right. Um, I, I remember the other day you mentioned this thing about the house. Oh, yeah. Like if you said, hey, hey, uh, where's Dylan? And this is how I, I remember it. You said, hey, where's Dylan? You said, oh, um, he's in the house. Said, well, I can't see him. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, he's there. that's because he's in the house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The reason you can't see Dylan is because he's in the house. Yeah. Well, the reason that God doesn't see your sin is because you're in Christ. Amen. Okay? That's yeah. why he's not, that's why he says, I remember their yeah. sins no more. Yeah. That's yeah. why he says, I remember them no more. Yeah. Because you're in Christ. The Bible says, you, he says, all those who are baptized in Christ have put him on. Mm -hmm. So you are rolled with his righteousness. And that's why God is not zeroing in on your sin. Mm -hmm. That's how Jesus actually became sin for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's heavy, huh? Yeah. That's how, that's how that's it was. How we, that, I got yeah, it I know. Now we got it, we figured it out. Okay, so you see that. So are you following this train of thought? Mm -hmm. He sympathizes with the weakness. 
And he invites you now to come boldly to the throne of grace, mm -hmm. to receive mercy and grace whenever you need it, right? Mm -hmm. He says you're saved to the uttermost, utmost completely, mm -hmm. because you come to God through Christ, because he always lives to intercede on your behalf, okay, right? And, and right? And, 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 uh, and he, he promises, this is a promise, I will, I will uh, be merciful to your unrighteousness, and I'll remember your sins no more. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you feeling me? Yeah. And watch this. Verse 24, verse 9, verse 24. We're just leading up to 10, and then we'll, we'll be done. Okay. Verse 24. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Mm -hmm. Now, that means right now, mm -hmm. to appear in the presence of God for us. For us. Yeah. I have a mediator. Amen. Even if I sin. Amen. He said, even yes. if you sin, you have an advocate. Yeah. I have an advocate, a mediator. There's no other mediator except the one Jesus Christ. He's the, he's the only sure foundation, like Jesus Christ. Attorney. He's our mediator. Well, how does it say? He's our there's, a, there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Who right. Gave himself a he's my mediator. Yes. He's my advocate. The Bible, yes. we saw last week how he's our comforter, right? He's the God of all comfort, and he comforts us so we can comfort others. Oh, my God. <coughs> Isn't that amazing? Good. It is, it is good. You, you see how, oh my God, but you see those, you, you zero in on those and you hear some stuff. Like, I, I wake up in the morning and I hear, I, I have a Christian talk radio mm -hmm. as my alarm at seven o'clock in the morning goes mm -hmm. off. Yeah, it, it's an alarm and it's so I, I'm getting ministered as I sleep. Mm -hmm. But sometimes these ministers come on there and they're just like. It, it, you know it, they're pointing their finger oh at Oh my you. gosh. Yeah. It's yeah, the stuff I that know. Dylan's talking about. It's, it's, the, it's, and I hear that. And I just, I get, I just gotta hit the button and turn that I off. Know. I can't I mean, hear there's that. Some, some preachers I refuse to listen to. Oh my gosh. Um, I was just, up to turn it off. Flipping through. Oh um, uh, yeah, go ahead. We've got Facebook, go. and there's this Madonna, uh, not Madonna.